understanding ACLS drugs for static and dynamic cardiology prep. So the first drug we have here is adenosine, and adenosine is an antiarrhythmic that we use for SVT or PSVT. Basically, adenosine is for narrow, complex tachycardias. It decreases electrical conduction through the AV node without causing negative inotropic effects. Inotropic means the force and speed of contraction. Again, it's indicated for SVT or narrow, complex tachycardia. Some contra indications include hypersensitivity which is true for most drugs bradycardia we don't want to give this to patients obviously if their heart rate is already slow drug induced tachycardia second or third degree heart blocks afib a flutter vtac wpw with afib or a flutter there are some minor interactions as you can see listed here the dosage First dose is gonna be six milligrams followed by a rapid 10 cc flush. And then the second dose is gonna be 12 milligrams followed by a rapid 10 cc flush. Now it's important to remember that the that this drug has a short half-life, which means that it becomes ineffective very quickly. So it also has a short duration of action. What we wanna do is we wanna put the IV as close to the heart as possible. You know, in the left AC, we wanna put a larger IV if we can, like a, a 18, even though a 20 will work. And then we just have to prepare the patient for the discomfort that's gonna come. It may cause an asystolic period that you may see on the monitor. The patient may feel very uncomfortable, but we just have to prepare them for that. That, and hopefully that this will work to break their SVT. Next we have amiodarone, which is a class three antiarrhythmic. This prolongs the duration of the action potential, prolongs the refractory period, and also has some beta adrenergic receptor and calcium channel blocking activity. It works on both the ventricles and the atria. So this is kind of like a big break for the heart, right? It's, it's slows everything down. We primarily use it for ventricular arrhythmias like ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia. It's contraindicated in CHF, cardiogenic shock, bradycardia, second or third degree AV blocks. It's also contraindicated with hypersensitivity to the drug or to iodine. So this drug may precipitate digitalis toxicity. Beta blocker and calcium channel blockers may cause a sign arrest and it may cause AV blocks. Dosage. So for ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, we do a 300 milligram bolus followed by 150 milligrams three to five minutes later if no response. And for stable VTAC, we do 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. Some considerations. This may cause hypotension in your patient because you're slowing the heart rate down, slowing the heart rate down can decrease your blood pressure and also shaking the vial could cause foam which does not which is not ideal for drawing the drug up so try not to shake the vial so dopamine is a sympathomimetic or a vasopressor it acts primarily on the alpha one and the beta one adrenergic receptors causing increased stroke volume contractility heart rate and cardiac output dopamine also increases peripheral vascular resistance and preload. So we use dopamine for hemodynamic significant hypotension in the absence of hypovolemia. So we don't want to give this to hypovolemic patients. Uh, we give it for cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, and septic shock. It's also a second line pharmacological treatment for bradycardia after atropine. Dopamine is contraindicated in uh, hypovolemia, trauma, tachyarrhythmia, is VFib. Uh, some interactions to be aware of are MAOIs may potentiate the drug, beta blockers, and bicarbonate will inhibit the effects of dopamine. Dosage of dopamine for ACLS is now 5 to 20 mics per kilogram per minute IV drip and we titrate to the desired effect. Something to consider with dopamine is it may increase an infarct in patients with an active MI. So we should be getting a 12 lead on these cardiac 
correct patients, but it is uh, definitely important if we are using dopamine. Epinephrine, so when we're talking about epi for ACLS, we're talking about the cardiac dose, which is one to 10,000. It is a sympathomimetic. It acts on the alpha, beta one, and beta two adrenergic receptors. We use it for cardiac arrest. There is no contraindications in the emergency setting. It may be potentiated by MAOIs and beta blockers and bicarbonate may inhibit, but we really don't take that into consideration. During cardiac arrest, we're going to use epi on pretty much everybody. The dosage is one milligram of one to 10,000 every three to five minutes with no max. There's also an infusion dose of one milligram of epinephrine mixed with 500 mLs of normal saline and then we give it at 2 to 10 mics per minute. One thing to consider with epinephrine is that it increases myocardial oxygen demand. But again, with uh, cardiac arrest patients, the most important thing is getting these drugs in, continuing CPR, and doing our best to have a good outcome. Next, we have mag sulfate, which is an electrolyte, and we use this for torsades. Um, it's also used for other things in the emergency setting, but specifically for ACLS, we're using it torsades, which is caused by a QT prolongation due to an electrolyte imbalance of uh, potassium and magnesium. So contraindications, any heart blocks or myocardial damage or hypotension. There are some mild interactions for considerations. Calcium should be available as an antagonist if needed. But if we are using this medication for torsades, it is usually a life-threatening condition and the contraindications or the considerations and interactions usually aren't as important as treatment with some other drugs. And as always, if you have any concerns or issues with the administration of the drug, you can contact Medical Command for further guidance. Next, we have Sotolol. Sotolol is a beta blocker. It prolongs the absolute refractory period without affecting conduction, suppresses ventricular ectopy uh, when amiodarone and procainamide are not effective. Uh, we usually use this following adenosine if adenosine is ineffective for a narrow complex tachycardia according to the ACLS tachycardia algorithm. If adenosine is ineffective, we can use beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. So Sotolol is a beta blocker. For contraindications, just be aware of hypersensitivity, chronic lung issues. Obviously, we don't want to give it for bradycardia, second degree AV blocks. The dose is 100 milligrams or 1.5 milligrams per kilogram over five minutes. Minutes. And this medication must be given slowly. Be aware that it can cause bradycardia, hypotension, and possibly torsades. Diltiazem. So diltiazem is a calcium channel blocker. We also use this for narrow complex tachycardias. It's primarily used for a fib or a flutter. A calcium channel blocker slows down conduction at the AV node by lengthening the refractory period. Contraindications, hypersensitivity, hypotension, sick sinus syndrome, and acute MI. Uh, dosage is initially we do 0.25 milligrams per kilogram followed by 0.35 milligrams per kilogram 15 minutes later. We don't want to use this with patients who have a wide QRS WPW with Parkinson White or AV blocks. If you're preparing for your paramedic exam, subscribe to the channel for more videos and go ahead and hit the like button and let me know if this video was helpful for you.